I'm going to talk about my favourite machine today. Well, I say my favourite. It's my current favourite. I go through machines quite a lot. Check it out. This is the Bishop Wand Liner. So it all began. I needed, a, oh, I wanted a dedicated tattoo uh, lining machine. Something with a really long throw because I love running the tip of a machine, especially for stipple shading. Running the tip is always the best bet for me. I just feel like I have more control. If I'm not pushing against the tube, if I'm running the tip, I seem to be able to get the smoothest peppery shading I can. I was looking around, I asked a lot of people, most people recommended the Bishop Wand Packer. They said the, the shader would be too light for me. The Packer's the best all-rounder. But I wasn't sure if I wanted another all-rounder. So before I had the Bishop Wand Liner, I had the FK Irons Zion, which don't get me wrong, was an amazing machine. It's great. But even with the minimal amount of adjustments you can make to it, so the give was literally the only adjustments you can make with this machine. It was too much for me. I wanted simplicity, but I also wanted something that I could dedicate as a liner. So I ignored everyone and got the Bishop liner. And with a five mil stroke, I was a bit dubious because that's powerful. That's a long stroke. That's a recipe for disaster if you try anything else other than lines. So I got it and gave it a try. Didn't like it at first. Then, after giving it a whirl for a couple of months, I can't live without that machine now. And it is only used for lining and my peppery whip shading, whatever the hell you call it now. It's not stippling, because I'm not doing the dots separately. But my, my shading on anything small, I still use mags on the larger stuff. I still use my Cheyenne Hawk for that. So anyway, this is my little rundown of that machine and why I love it so much. Call it a review if you will. I see this more as just a few examples of why I like this machine. Number one, the ergonomics. It's a long, it's an elongated pill shape. And you know what, it's great. It's short and stubby. Now I love a stubby grip, much better for the wrist if it's stubby. I like to wrap it, make it even thicker. So it's like double the thickness by the time I've wrapped it. If you watch my last video, which I'll put somewhere here, where I use a, I do the setup, you'll see how I wrap my grips. Now, I like to make them fat. Now, having it short means that when I'm holding the machine, only a small amount fits at the top. So all the weight is pushed towards the center. It's, it's directed to where the tattoo is, to where you're working to the edge of the pen. This isn't like, tattoo machines aren't like pens. You don't want it thin, small, nimble. You want it weighted towards the area you're tattooing. It gives you more control. So for that reason, I like it. Now compared to the Zion, which was fatter near the bottom, so it had a lot more weight, uh, the center of weight was more towards the needle. It was longer by, ooh, maybe an inch, maybe not that much off the top of my head. It was about an inch. And when you put a battery on the top or even a, a, a thick RCA coming out the back, it really made the weight push down a bit more on the back, which I personally don't like. I've got tiny little hands. Well, they're not tiny, but you know, I haven't got massive hands, so they don't, I want a machine where the weight sits more towards where my fingers are holding the needle, not at the back here. I want the weight here. So yeah, nice and short and stubby, perfect. Number two, the throw, five mil. There's some cons to this, I've noticed, I, I go for a lot of needles. I try a lot of different needles. I have noticed that some needles can't handle that throw and it, it breaks the membrane inside. So I had that a lot with my Magic Moon needles. Um, some of the Killer Inks own the Stella needles. I haven't tried the Cheyenne needles with it, but so far, the needles that I've been using recently are Ghost and all the different kind of Ghost needles and the Quadrant, and they haven't been breaking. And, and I, when I say I like the throw, I use 
the throw to the full extent. Like I'm hanging that out at five mil. It's right to the end. I sometimes push it back a bit, depending if I'm tattooing like it's a bit tight around a bone or something like that. But majority of the time, I'm using that throw to the full extent. Give me a 5.5 or even a six mil throw and I'll run it to the end. I want this much machine, this much needle. And I'm like hovering above the toe, just softly brushing, just feeling it. It's more about the sound sometimes. If, if it sounds great when you're like, it's not snagging and it sounds smooth, then I know I'm at the right depth. And that'll take me on to point number three, the sound. And this is important to me, really important. A machine needs to sound smooth, man, smooth. If it sounds rattly, if it runs too loud, or even if it runs too quiet, actually, no, I like quiet. But if it runs too loud and the sound isn't consistent, then all I've got in the back of my head is that there's something wrong with the machine. You know, maybe there's not. Maybe that's just how the machine runs. But when you've got in the back of your head that there's something wrong with the machine and you're not concentrating on the tattoo, it takes your mind away from the art, man. So, the sound, and it sounds great. It's got that perfect little hum to it. It sounds shit before you put a needle in. But once you put a needle in, really got that hum to it. And that's really important to me. Number four, connections. Now you can get the Bishop One Liner, I think it's called the Power Liner, and it has like a battery that's magnetized and built into it. So I didn't opt for that because, although now afterwards I realized you can actually get a, a attachment that allows you to put an RCA into it. I didn't realize that at the time. So I got the normal RCA standard Bishop One Liner. And I'm running the Bishop battery pack off the top. Now, even with that on top, because the machine is short and stubby, it's still not overweighted at the back. I mean, the battery pack is pretty light anyway. So overall, it feels nice on the hand. And other than that, you can't say much about the connections. They're solid, they don't wiggle around. It's not like the Zion had this like cusp that went around the side, uh, around it, which I get kind of makes it more stable for your RCA so you're not knocking it around, but it doesn't, really help when you've got battery packs or, or or leads that have a weird connection end because then you can't really fit it on. In conclusion, I'm very happy with this purchase. Don't get me wrong, I'll probably get a new machine in a year and I love that too. But for me right now, especially for the lining and for the peppery shading, this is perfect. I can't see myself needing a new machine for a while. Now I still use my Cheyenne Hawk pen for mags, love that machine. I haven't yet delved into buying a new machine for mag shading. I might get this, I can't remember what it's called now, Soul Nova maybe? I don't know, similar to the Shine Hawk, I've been told. Well, I might just stick with the Shine Hawk pen. My one's ratty, old and fallen apart and could do with an update. So we'll see, we'll see how long that lasts. At the moment, it runs smooth still. It still puts them colors, them packing, that anything in. And if my Bishop one liner decides to take a trip to Toe Machine Heaven, the Shine Hawk pen will cover its ass. So yeah. I recommend the Bishop Wand Liner myself for lining and peppery shading. So I hope that was helpful for everyone. If you could like and subscribe to my channel and please head over to Patreon and subscribe for the smallest amount. It really does help me keep making this content. This stuff does cut into time. I love doing it, but you know, I've still got to make a living. So finding time to make these is quite hard and long. Thank you everyone and I love you. Mwah.